Hello and welcome to KCC TV episode 7. We have got a great episode coming up. Karen, what's on this episode? First up, we've got a bit of a winter theme. Everyone's going inside, so we've got a feature on Zwift. Following that, we have some Christmas gift suggestion ideas from our friends at Wheelbase. And then we've got an interview with Hannah Reynolds, who is a club member who's written a book. And she's going to be our first in-studio guest. Very exciting. As well. Then we're going to have the results of last month's Climb of the Month competition with Kirby Lonsdale Cycle Club, followed by a new festive themed competition for this month. I can't wait for that. And then we've got a piece on keeping fit um, and what some things we can do over the winter from Paul at Map Deck. And finally, we have a great piece all about Wheels for All, the charity uh, in Kendall. And we're going to finish with a bit of KCC news. So, should we get into our first feature then, Ben? Yes. It's all about Zwift, which this time of year, I think everybody looks out the window on a Saturday morning and goes, oh no, I'm not going out in that weather. And it's perfect time um, to get, you know, get out the, the um, turbo trainer and sign up for some Zwifting. Now, I know um, there's an awful lot of KCC members who do this, but I think if you haven't done it before, it can be a little bit intimidating. What do I need? How do I sign up? What does it involve? Um, I know you're keen on Zwift, aren't you? Yeah, and, and one of the, the good things about this piece is it's going to show what the reality of Zwifting at home actually looks like. So, here's my setup. Got a headband, fan, 70s clock, screen, laptop, tea towels, discarded headbands. And that is it. Zwift, it's, a, it's an online platform for riding your bike. Um, and it's just, it's many things to different people. You can use it for a training tool, do it online, the, the Zwift training programs or your own training program. Personally, I use it more of a social riding platform. Basically, you need a turbo and you'll find on Zwift.com there will be a list of which turbos you can use. And then something to run Zwift on. So you could do it on your phone, on an iPad, Apple TV, PC, laptop, anything really. When I set up a KCC social ride, I usually put a post on the KCC Facebook page to say that I've set one up. And I have to invite you. So to do that, you have to be friends with me on Zwift. There's me and there's Rachel Rogers that also run it. So when I put the, the ride up, I will put my Zwift name up as well. And you'll just need to go onto Zwift, onto the companion app, find me, add me as a friend, and then tell me on the Facebook page that you are adding, and I'll add you. After that, every time I set one up, I just add everybody from KCC and you can join if you want to. Stinking horrible day, I can still ride around God's own country. Come and take a look at this. There's my little avatar there on the screen riding around Harrogate. Let me launch an aero boost. Look at me go.
I just love that film, Ben. The reality versus, you know, what the ads say it's going to look like. I mean, I know we just try and squeeze our machines in anywhere. You know, we've had them in the dining room, we've had them in the spare bedroom and stuff. It's, um, you know, just squeezing wherever, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And if you're interested in, in getting started on Zwift, then Linda's given some great information there. And our next piece is going to help too. Because with Christmas coming up, we thought it might be good to get some gift idea suggestions for cyclists. So we've asked our friends at Wheelbase who sponsor our Climb of the Month uh, if they would give us a quick few ideas about Christmas gifts. Hi, welcome to Wheelbase, UK's largest cycle store, just down the road for most of Kendall Cycle Club members in Staveley, just outside Windermere. I'm Toby, this is Johnny, and uh, we've got some uh, Santa suggestions for this, uh, this, this Christmas. So, first off, we've got indoor trainers. Uh, if you've not got one already, great bit of kit. We do a, a number of brands, uh, Tax, Wahoo, and we also do Elite. Uh, two types of trainers, the direct mount trainer, which is the best style of trainer, particularly for Swift. We also do the wheel on as well, which is a little bit more simple to set up. We've got the ultimate commuter kit. Um, we've also got a bike cleaning essentials kit, the new plastic free set, so there's nothing plastic in there. And we're even doing the, uh, the muck off pressure washer, a pressure washer designed specifically for bicycles. Kids' um, bikes, there is no shortage of kids' bikes at, at Wheelbase. We've got a fantastic selection. This is only part of the stock that we, that we hold on to on kids' bikes this, uh, this Christmas. Uh, great new brands for us, we've got Squish, Q. Frog, obviously, they've changed the game for, uh, for kids' bikes. Got a shop from, uh, from Denmark. White have also changed the game of kids' bikes. So, yeah, loads of good options uh, from all the major brands uh, this Christmas. We've got an extensive library of um, bike related books. Feed Zone Portables, Fast After 50, loads of new guidebooks. The old classic Zin updated uh, mountain bike maintenance book. And then Dad's favourite Christmas present pairs of socks. We've got loads of socks here on offer. Um, loads of great colours, waterproof, thermal, uh, mountain down here, road upstairs, so plenty of socks for any stocking filler. Don't forget we also do our own uh, wheelbase vouchers um, and we're happy to give those to you so they can come in and buy their own um, gift. So thanks to Wheelbase for some great Christmas present suggestions there. You might even want to show that clip to some relatives or loved ones if they want some ideas for what to get you. Thanks, Ben. And you'll see we've got our first ever in-studio guest on KCC TV. So welcome to Hannah Reynolds, KCC member and author of a brand new book, which also needs to go on your Christmas list, 1001 Cycling Tips. So welcome, Hannah. Thank you for having me. And do you want to tell us about the book? Um, yeah, so it's uh, fairly uh, what it says on the tin, a thousand and one cycling tips. Um, it's aimed at all types of cyclists. Uh, you might think a thousand and one tips sounds like a lot, but I can assure you cyclists love giving advice. And I'm sure if you've been on a uh, training ride, you'll have heard tips flying around left, right and centre. So really, I've used my experience as a, a guide, as a writer, as someone who's ridden a bike for a long time, just to be like a conduit for all of these cycling tips and advice and mm -hmm. just got them down on the page. And hopefully there's something for everyone. I think there is. And what I love about it is you could start at the beginning and read it from start to finish, or you can just open it up and read one or two tips. And I think there's just, they're, they're so true to life and so full of good advice. They were really yeah. fun to write because I was allowed to uh, put a bit of personality into it. So some of them are a little bit tongue in cheek and some of them are my personal opinion and I'm fondly looking forward to the moment when people start to uh, tell me I've got it all wrong. <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> some people will be highly opinionated. So Hannah, can, can you perhaps give us, if you were to pick one of these out, give us perhaps your, you know, choose one tip for us right, that, that, okay. that you would like to share with everyone today. Well, there's quite a few that I particularly like but the one that I think is most, most true in some ways is um, 993, that cycling is a way of life, not just a sport or a hobby. And uh, I think for me personally, that's my experience of being a bike rider. It's not something that I do, you know, Saturday morning, I put my lycra on and I go for a bike ride and then I'm a bike rider. It's part of all of my life. It's my friendships, it's my transport, it's my fitness, it's my mental health, it's my travel, it's my holidays. Uh, it really touches every part of what I do. I think in that one sentence you have summed up what cycling is. 
probably for everybody watching yeah. this. So well done. Ben, have you got a favourite tip? I know you've been looking at the book. Yeah, well, what I like about this, Hannah, is some of the tips are really practical and they're, they're real, there's, there's great things about signals and people that might want to learn how to do that, lots of stuff on maintenance, and then there's stuff that you just shared that's a bit more about why we might do cycling. Something that, um, that stood out for me was, was actually, uh, it was in the section about apps and tools, actually, and I particularly liked um, tip uh, number 801, which says one of the side effects of Strava addiction is the sheer amount of time you can spend looking on the app and analysing your performance and that of your rivals. And you might actually have more time for cycling without it. Mm, yeah, very true. I'm sure there's people who spend um, upwards of a, a third of their hour training session looking at Strava afterwards. Just think how much more training you could get in. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because my favourite tip was also from that same section on Strava. Um, it's tip 801, and for me, also 800. Um, and for me, this is a bit of an urban myth, this one. Um, and I've heard this story before. Um, and it's a self confessed Strava addict, Strava Ben, as I know him, keeps a spreadsheet detailing the optimal wind direction for each segment within a route so he can cross reference this with the weather report. It's this kind of dedication that gets you king of the mountains or queen of the mountains. Well, that is... <laughs> is this true? Absolutely I don't, I don't true. Know who that could be. Strava Ben, have you heard of anyone... Sorry, Ben, have you heard of anyone <laughs> called Strava Ben? No, I've got no idea. And I think whoever would do that sort of thing, it just sounds ridiculous to me. Yeah, well, I can't reveal my sources. Mm. But let's say if you, if you looked at a list of king of the mountains, I think Ben might reveal himself by that answer. So moving on, Hannah... Um, <laughs> Can you tell us where, where people can get hold of the book if they want to buy it? It's uh, available in all good bookshops, of course. It's published by Vertebrae, so you can buy it directly on Vertebrae's website. It is on Amazon as well. Um, but please support your local bookshops and your independent booksellers this Christmas, because we all appreciate that. Yeah. Now, we have got a couple of copies to give away. Mm -hmm. So, Cam, what do people need to do to enter the competition and maybe win one of these? Yes. So what you need to do is you need to go to the comments section on our YouTube channel and you need to tell us your top cycling tip. And then we will review these next month and pick our favourite two and you will get a copy of the book. Get your tips in. Hannah, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, Thank you very much for inviting me. And good luck with the book. Thanks very much indeed. So while we're talking about Strava and all things like that, we're moving on to the results of last month's Climb of the Month, which was um, set by Kirby Lonsdale, wasn't it, Ben? It was. And our uh, friends at Kirby Lonsdale, let's just have a quick reminder of what that climb looked like. We set a competition, and I think the first thing to report is who was fastest out of the two clubs. Yes, go on. Have you got the results? So, uh, the fastest male on the segment was actually Stu McWilliam from KCC with a time of 16.45. Fastest female on the segment was Angela Cockerham from Kirby Lonsdale CC with a time Ooh. of 24-24. One all. So a it is draw. one all. We've, had, we've ended up with a draw. We might need a rematch at some point, mightn't we? I think we will. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we said that, that anyone who rode the segment would be put into the draw to win a £50 voucher from Wheelbase. So, uh, Karen, I've got the female entries in here. So if you'd Shall like I pick to one? Pick I like. One we haven't got a helmet this week. It's, uh, we're going festive. We're going festive. Let me put all oh, this few in there. Let me have a look. So we've got Leslie Duig, who did it in 3109, and from Kirby Lonsdale. From Kirby Lonsdale. Well done, Leslie. Your £50 wheel based voucher will be winging its way to you. And, and then I've got in the Christmas pudding, <laughs> I've got the men. Do you want to pick? I'll pick one the of the men. Let's see who we've got in here. There's a lot in here. Uh, uh, right, what have we got? We have got, oh, KCC member Simon Frost. Well done, Simon. So there we go. One all, one all. <laughs> one all, one all. We, and we, we genuinely didn't fix that either. That actually happened. Wow. 
<laughs> Excellent. Um, and I think a shout, shout out to Sue Little, who has completed all of the climbing months so far. So well done to Susan. Um, and we've got another one for you to do this month, Susan. You're going to have to get out there in this bad weather and keep your record going. Um, what is it this month, Ben? So uh, this month, KCC member Padraig Spillane has chosen a climb. So let's see what he's got for us. Hi, my name is Padraig and um, I'm just introducing you to my climb of the month for December. Um, it's the Newbiggin Lane climb up from Clawthorpe and it's 1.6 miles long uh, so it's, it's not, not too big an undertaking uh, for when the weather's like this on a, on a uh, wintry day with the, with the snow. And with it being December we're going full Christmas so can you beat my antlers? <laughs> What I like about this climb is it's a nice steady gradient for the most part, so it's undulating, which means that you can really take it at your own pace. If it's a nice day where it's sunny and you've got the good views, you can um, take it nice and steady. Whereas on a day like today where we've got snow and it's freezing cold, you can really go full gas and it can, it can warm you up. What I don't like about this climb is occasionally you can meet traffic, which isn't much fun. Um, and also it has a real stinger of a finish. So just when you think you've got the climb beat, um, the steepest section is right at the end where it might get over 10%. My fastest time, I believe, is 7.04, um, which is only a couple of seconds behind the club record, I believe. So thanks, Padraig. And our competition for the next month is a fancy dress competition. You don't say that. <laughs> Things well, we do for KCC TV. Well, we both know that I think our most popular competition was the beach themed climb where people did a lot it was, of wasn't it? Yeah, a lot of fancy dress and got very creative. Yeah. So this month it's all about going to ride the climb uh, in a festive fancy dress. What are you hoping for here, Karen? I'm hoping for Santa, I'm hoping for elves, maybe even a sleigh. You know, I don't know. What do you reckon? Oh, we want lights, right? We want oh, flashing yeah, lights. Oh, light, yeah, flashing lights, yeah. Lots yeah. of glitter, Christmas trees. That, that works. Mince pies, people eating mince pies at the top. That would be a good one. So <laughs> I'm sure that everyone watching will be way more creative than we are. Um, so uh, go and ride the climb in some fancy dress. Send us your photos and we'll be choosing a couple of winners uh, next month. And sort of on the... Um, theme of Christmas and keep you know being winter and stuff one of the things is sometimes you can't get out so you want to think a bit more about you know your winter training and your winter fitness and our next film I think is really fascinating it's a bit of a look into a way of keeping fit do you want to tell us a bit more Ben? Yeah so um, Paul from AppDeck um, takes us into the realms of technical fitness training and I think one of the things that often when when you're training is it's not always clear how to make the best gains we're all different, we all have different bodies. And I went down to Map Deck and Paul took me through a new type of fitness testing, which is really about discovering how you can make the best gains for yourself.
Hey, hello and welcome to the Map Deck Indoor Cycling Studio. My name is Paul and today I'm here to demonstrate uh, a new type of fitness assessment that we're offering that looks at how your body utilizes oxygen to provide the energy that powers your muscles. Now with this information, we get a really detailed look at what limits your future performance in terms of the efficiency of your muscular, cardiac or pulmonary system. And today we're joined by someone from KCC to help us out and show you guys what it's all about. Hey Ben, thanks for joining us today. How are you feeling? I'm good, Paul. Thank you. Thank you for having me along. I'm looking forward to this. Now in front of you, Ben, what you can see is the Moxie 515 test. We do five minutes really easy, followed by one minute's complete rest. Five minutes really easy by one minute's rest. Then we go up 30 watts and repeat that 515 process. And then we go into our threshold and then we go over your threshold. Come on, Ben, keep going. Okay, Ben, sit up. Let me take the mask off. Nice one, Ben. Well done. Should be no resistance now. Just spin your legs and take into your cool down. You got some really, really cool results from that. Okay, let's get stuck into the analysis. And what we're looking at here is a significant pulmonary limitation. Remember, not a weakness, this is a limiter. So if Ben is trying to train to improve his performance, this just tells us that this is where Ben is best spending his time focused on. So the bottom blue line you can see is the SMO2, uh, saturation of muscle oxygen, in Ben's working muscle, that right quad. Now, the, the clues here is that during the working load, the muscle oxygen saturation stays the same even though Ben's heart rate and respiratory frequency is going up. So Ben is trying to work harder to maintain the same level of oxygen saturation, which actually finds a state of hemostasis. Now, the good news here is that when the load comes off, Ben resaturates very quickly and that recovery starts instantly. We can see that here and we can see that here and that's instant recovery. Now, the other clue here is that Ben resaturates after every single rest to about the same level, about 74%. Ben has a maximum capacity of about 74% um, oxygen saturation in the working muscle. So if we're gonna give Ben some training advice to take away from this test, what would that be? Well, the thing is Ben has two opportunities to work on his pulmonary system in terms of how to ride. First off, you can work at a very aerobic capacity type of ride. So really, really, really easy riding. And we can use that VO2 mask to test where Ben's aerobic capacity is. The other opportunity we have to train a pulmonary limitation is right at the very hard scale of the intensity um, of a workout. And that is when we have got our anaerobic and our aerobic absolutely maxed out, what we'd often call VO2 training. And we can use the moxies in classes here at MapDeck or in private sessions to really help Ben focus on what intensity and what duration of interval is really going to help Ben with that training limitation. Now, I appreciate this is a very technical subject for a very short video. So as always, our doors are open. If you want to come down and have a chat to me or any other coaching team down here, we'd be really, really happy to show you around and have a, have a chat about what we have to offer that might suit you. Okay, with all that in mind, over to you, Ben. Well done. Thanks very much, Paul. Um, that was a really helpful insight. And uh, if you're interested in, lear in learning more, we have a longer version of that film uh, with a link in the YouTube description where you can learn even more about what Paul has been talking about. By the way, if you ride with me in the black group, you're not allowed to watch that at all because you might just discover how to beat me. Um, and I, I was looking through Hannah's book, and one of the things that, uh, that Hannah says in, in tip number 653 is people arrive at fitness in different ways. So generic training plans won't work for everyone. And I think that's really at the heart of what Paul's doing, actually, mm -hmm. is helping us all understand how we might make the best gains in our fitness with, with, with our own bodies. Mm -hmm. So I know for me, it was really helpful in understanding a bit more about that. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I think what you've said, though, just applies to everybody. And you don't always need um, to be hooked up to the latest equipment or pushing yourself to like get king of the mountains to make, use cycling to get fit. And I think our next film really sums that up. Um, we're going to take a look at a film that was created um, by Tim Price. Um, and it was premiered, world premiere, at Kendall's um, Mountain Festival. 
a couple of weeks ago. And it's looking at the Wheels for All um, group in Kendall, which is a really important part of Kendall Cycle community and um, uh, gets a lot of support from Kendall Cycle Club members. And um, in this film, Tim takes a closer look at um, what the um, unit does and what it means for the people who use it. for all Kendall get started or why did it get started? Uh, well some some long time ago um, my husband who was then using a mobility scooter um, had to have given up his uh, two-wheeler unfortunately. Uh, the only place we could go and actually try a two-wheeler or other adapted bikes was up in Watchtree which is in the north of the county which is quite a way to go from here. So having experienced that um, uh, I thought we thought, I thought, it was a, a good thing to try and drive something forward here and little did I know, meeting somebody called Chris, quite by chance at a, um, something nothing to do with cycling, uh, to do with archaeology actually, um, we got chatting about bikes and I realised that she had also the same motivation and she had already started talking to other people in the area. So I joined the group and uh, we worked hard to um, establish something in the Kendall area. Uh, we did have some input from the National Park, which was great, and um, various other sources and lots of people who really did put a lot of hard work into it. So thanks to them, this group's got going. What's your role for, with Wheels for All? Well, my role is um, Kendall Co Wheels for All coordinator. And what does that involve? That involves setting up sessions for cyclists that need to use adaptive bikes and um, also recruiting volunteers. So how much does it cost for people to come to Wheels for All? Well, we're a charity, but we ask a £5 voluntary donation. What do people get for their um, £5, Chris? Oh, during the session we, we lend the bikes and the helmets and uh, there's always somebody to help them uh, accessing the bikes and going for rides. We go around uh, cones in the car park and practice skills sessions and then we venture further off up the cycle paths. Some people um, gain experience and enjoy using the road as well. Which yeah. bike did you used to use when you first came to us at Wheels for All? The DAP bike. Is that the black recumbent? Yeah, oh, it is. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. So you like riding two wheels to start with. Yeah. Yeah. So did you practice here? But here. Yeah. 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 Very good. You worked hard at that, haven't you? Yeah, you I did. Put it on two wheels. That bow. How far are you going now? That way. Well, all the way down side back there. Yeah. Over, yeah. 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 But you're out on the roads now. I'm like, on board now. Two people. Yeah. 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 You've been to Natland, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So you're getting pretty strong. Yeah. Lovely. So when we first got started, um, we had uh, a wonderful lady called Kath Finn who was uh, given to us <laughs> as our coordinator and she has done a fantastic job to get this group started. We've had people from social services, we've had um, students from the special school and we've had individuals from the community coming to experience bikes. Many have gone on to buy their own bikes, some uh, keep coming back, some it's a one-off. But uh, we're indebted to Kath for having got this group going. She is a star. Thank you, Kath. That is such a good film, Ben, and I really enjoyed watching it live um, at the Rapper Road um, session at Kendall Mountain Festival, which you were hosting. And that was such a good evening. Um, there were just so many interesting speakers talking about all different types of cycling, lots of great films. Um, so if you haven't seen that, I would really recommend watching it on Catch Up on the Kendall Mountain Festival player. Um, ben, it's still up there, isn't it? And you can, people can sign up and watch it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Karen. So yeah, for a small fee, you can go online and you can watch the entire two-hour session, which is really diverse. It's got a lot of different, uh, a lot of different elements to it. And we can see you being bossed around by a 13-year-old girl who is so good on the rollers <laughs> for everybody to shame, didn't she? Yes, you can see that, yes. <laughs> worth, worth the 6 99 just for that moment. <laughs> 
So this really brings us to the end of this episode. Um, one item of KCC news, which is really important, which is from our Women's Secretary, Christine Briggs, which is to say that the Women's Weekend for 2022 is now being arranged. And if you haven't seen it yet, you can find details on the club Facebook page. And a big thank you to everyone who attended the AGM a couple of weeks ago. Um, and congratulations to everybody who's been voted onto the committee. And also thank you to all the club members who responded to the cycling and walking plan consultation as well. So a, a few thank yous to close. We'll just say a big thank you to Pete Elwood and Tim Price who have been producing this episode. Thank you to MapDeck for their invaluable help with the filming and to Wheelbase who sponsor our Climb of the Month. Thanks to Kirby Lonsdale CC for providing the competition last time. And to Padraig Spillane who does Climb of the Month for this month. Uh, to, thanks to Hannah Reynolds who came into the studio today and to Wheels for All who uh, took part in that last film. And to Strava Ben as well for inspiring us all. Whoever he might be. Remember our two competitions this month. You can comment with your tip uh, below on YouTube to have a chance to win one of Hannah's books. And you can get some festive fancy dress going on Climb of the Month to send us your photos for a £50 wheelbase voucher. So I think it just remains to say Happy Christmas to everybody and thanks for your support this year. And do please like and subscribe, give us a thumbs up and we'll be back in the new year, won't we, Ben? We will see you in 2022.